Persistence ignorance is a concept people are trying to achieve when domain modeling, but it really is a scale. On one side, you have your domain model that is way too aware of how it's persisted and its concerns. What people are generally after is more clean approach where you're completely ignorant of anything to do with persistence in your domain model. Hey, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Persistence ignorance is a great concept, but in practice, it's a little harder to achieve, and you're likely gonna need to strike some type of balance. Here's some examples. Here's an example of a shipment. You think about a truck going to a warehouse, picking up a lot of products, different orders for different people, and then going to, to deliver those. Our shipment example here, let's say it's persisted and managed by an ORM. So we have some backing data. We have a shipment ID, which is likely the key, some shipper information on who's actually shipping this out, the list and collection of stops. I'll get to more of those in a second. And then we have different methods. One of them is doing an arrive. When the truck arrives at any given stop, this is an action that's performed to specify it's there. The only real logic we have here is that we're checking all the stops in the sequence to make sure that all the ones prior have been departed. If not, we're throwing an exception. So we can see that we know what the current stop is. So when I look at the actual stop, we have different methods that we can call. This one's the arrive. So we can change our status to arrive. Same type of thing, because this is persisted using our ORM, we have a bunch of different data here. We have a stop ID, again, like our key for this particular stop, the stop type, whether it is, say, the constant E or a delivery, where it's a pickup or the delivery, the location, the physical address, the status, the sequence. So we have a combination here of kind of our behavior, those methods, and then the backing data. That all looks pretty standard. What's the issue? Before I get into it, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So what's the issue with this? Well, it really just depends on what side of the scale that I showed earlier that you wanna be on. Because we were using an ORM, there was nothing really that indicated and knew about the ORM. Or was there? My shipment was about exposing behavior so that I could do the arrive, pick up, deliver. What does the shipment ID have to do with anything? That's just for persistence because of my RM, because that was the key. Same thing with the shipper. This is just about data. It has no logic around it. We do have an update method. This is simply about CRUD and data. So there's a mix here between behavior and data around that behavior and data that's simply a part of our ORM that we need to persist. And that's pretty much the question I was asked by a member of my channel on our private Discord, check the link in the description on how to join, is how do I have persistence ignorant domain entities with entity framework? I don't want my domain to care about metadata structure or how it's persisted, but it feels silly to creating all these mappings from domain objects to persisted objects. And it's a really common question, and here's another example that illustrates it. I mentioned the shipment ID was the primary key. This can be defined how you configure your ORM and in the mapping, or you can use an attribute, but people try to avoid this like the plague for some reason because, oh no, that's an infrastructure persistence concern in my domain, and I don't wanna be on that side. I want this to be pure or clean. Same thing with a column. Or something like you have audit information like last updated, some date time, or the user ID that last updated, updated it. And we don't want that in there because that's a persistence audit concern and it's not really focused on what the entity is doing and exposing those behaviors. What I think people start realizing, which I think is correct, is that your domain model is not your data model. The problem in lies if you're using something like an ORM, an entity framework, you're then trying to force both to be the same thing. And for people using clean architecture, you'll be familiar with this diagram and this direction of dependencies. And our infrastructure, that's where our ORM entity framework will live. And it's referencing to the application. Application inherently is then referencing the domain. And that's what you have against your entity framework. Entities are really living in your domain project. But as mentioned, they're a combination of domain entity slash data model. So if your domain model and your data model are different things, why are we forcing them to be the same? That would mean that we would have our data model in the infrastructure and our domain model be our domain model that has a behavior and only the state that it cares about to apply any type of state transition. That means that we have to do some type of mapping, or do we? I advocate for passing your data model to your domain model. So in my case with the repository, I can just fetch out the stops and pass that to our shipment. The shipment didn't care about the shipper, the shipment ID. It wasn't doing anything with that. It was only doing validation and logic around the stop, 
when we were performing different methods, different behaviors. And that's what we were making our state transitions. So I can pass the stops to it. So we can see we have our private member of stops and we can still have our arrive, but we don't care about all that other data that was there just for persistence. So you may be wondering, well, what do you do with the data that really is just crud? It has no logic. You just need to set data. Well, don't create any more indirection by having useless setter method. Create a separate data model that has that data and you use it as simply as you can with crud. The whole point of that shipment was to expose behavior. If there's no behavior, then there's no point of even creating that model. But if you're using clean architecture and you're gonna pass your data model to your domain model, you have a problem. Because if you think your infrastructure, that's where your data lives, now you're gonna have a dependency from your domain to your infrastructure because the domain needs to accept that data model. That can't happen if you're using this direction of dependencies. But you shouldn't actually have that problem because data isn't an infrastructure concern or about mapping. It's a key part of your domain. Yes, it's all about the behaviors and exposing those behaviors, but the data behind those behaviors. A little bit of food for thought to kind of make sense of this is if your understanding of event sourcing, you're using events as a means to record state, where do your events live? They're a part of your domain. So it really is about what side of the spectrum do you want to be on? If you have a complex domain with a lot of logic, you probably don't want to be on the very left where you understand all the infrastructure, how it's persisted the data structure. That might not be a great idea. If you don't, and it's really just crud, is it really that big of an issue? On the other side, do you want to jump through hoops with mappings and all kinds of complexity so that your domain model is completely 100% free of not only understanding how it's persisted, but any non-needed properties or data structures so that you have no idea how that's data uh, is structured. You're simply using your domain entities as a way to perform state transitions at a minimal view, and you don't care about how it's persisted. You might have to jump through a lot more hoops for that. I think if you make the distinction that your domain model is not your data model and you don't conflate the two, you'll realize how many more options you have around modeling. Even if you're not into event sourcing, it illustrates this really well because it does not conflate the two. I'll have a link to a video at the end of this video. It may give you some inspiration even if you're recording current state with an ORM. Hopefully this video gave you a little food for thought. If you enjoy topics like this and you want to chat with other software developers about DDD, event sourcing, CQRS, these types of topics around software architecture and design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.